Hi Robin with OxyDry and today um, I'm actually going to be cleaning my own carpet in the hallway and um, into the bedroom and uh, the office a little bit. The, uh, one of our little doggies was sick last night and had uh, upchuck and uh, diarrhea on the carpet so I've treated some of the stains and uh, now I'm going to clean the whole area. So I thought it'd be an opportunity to uh, well, pull this thing out. Um, um, it's been a couple of years since I bought this about well, two or three years ago, I guess. <clears throat> um, and um, so I don't know. I know a lot of you guys are familiar with the workhorse, and some of you guys are using it. Um, and uh, so I just want to talk to you about why. Um, well, basically, why I'm not using it anymore, because uh, I saw some videos showing it in action. You know, three years ago or so, and uh, I thought, wow, that looks like a pretty impressive vacuum, and it definitely picks up very well, and it's very impressive, particularly when you see the uh, junk going into the tank. You can literally see it happening, and here's the recovery tank right here, um, and uh, I'll show you how to put it together now, so um, I clean it out, and part of the reason why I don't like it, I mean, it's, it's one of the factors of that you have to bear in mind when you buy a machine like this, uh, or this one anyway, um, it is, um, it's messy, very messy. <laughs> and you do have to pull this thing apart and clean it out pretty much every day. And that's uh, kind of a pain in the butt. I'll have to drop my, uh, pick it up afterwards. Anyway, so this uh, is with Cyclonic. Oh, what I was gonna tell you about this. One of the other factors is that Particularly when you're in a home where you can pick up a lot of dog or cat hair, this cyclonic thing here, which pops up inside here, has a tendency to clog up pretty easily. Um, and you could be vacuuming away, not even realize that it's happened. And it, um, and then it starts to bypass, and then it goes into the filter, which I'll show you in a sec. And, and, it, and it constricts the flow, and it, it's just, it, it's a good idea, it's just the application of it is flawed. Anyway, there's the cyclonic put in place, and then the, the tank goes up into here. I think um, the story about this vacuum, by the way, for those of you who don't know, is that this is actually the first Dyson. Um, so it's pretty primitive. It, it certainly works well as far as functioning, but its application and some of the things about it are, you know, wasn't refined enough. And, and the fact is that, it, you know, like I said, it, it's, it's messy to dump. And... Um, Oh, there's a, a handle back here. I'll show you that. There's the, the locking mechanism for the for the uh, oh, there it goes for the uh, recovery tank, I guess. Um, anyway, uh, the other thing is that the filter system, and here it is, actually right here. Um, they didn't wasn't designed really well, and what you have to do is you have to go get this window trim stuff and put it around here because it doesn't seal very well where it slides in there and if you don't put the seal on here you'll end up with a lot of dust and crap going past this filter system which is a two-part there's a washable and then a like a paper thing here which you can replace obviously um, and then the washable filter thing um, but anyway dust and junk goes past here and goes through the motor and shortens the life of the motor and of course would be actually blowing out so it doesn't actually filter great at least as far as um, if it's pa going past here but when you put the this um, window uh, foam whatever there it, it, it works pretty well anyway that goes into here and there it is um, now the other thing about this vacuum that um, it, it's not really well made it was never intended to be used as a commercial vacuum, and that's obvious. It's just a little on the cheapy side. I mean, it's okay, but it's not, you know, it's, remember this thing is designed back in, what, the 80s or something, 90s? I don't know. Um, anyway, um, now it also can clog up very easily right in here. But fortunately, you can see that mostly, and then you undo these screws, and this bottom, or this back plate will come off, and you can get in there and clean it out. I never had that happen when I was using it. I used it for about six months or so. Uh, the hose, obviously quite small. What I would do is I would actually, I, this is a, a pipe for a Kirby, and I would pop this on here, and then I would just you know, have it sit in mate, kind of like that, and that worked fine. But when you go to use the hose, 
back in place here. This is that's how it came. It didn't come with any tools. Um, but and then to use the hose, uh, you have a a little uh, valve thing here, which you turn to hose right now, and turn it the other way back to uh, brush roll, which just changes the direction of where the airflow goes. But sometimes if you do the edges, you might forget. Um, that you have it on hose and you start vacuuming again you're wondering why doesn't this thing pick up but you know that was just a, a minor thing but oh and the other thing was um on the um release mechanism on the back the bottom which is right here i don't know if you can see that but this was this uh metal thing here has a plastic shoe on it or whatever and when you push your foot down it then allows the the um, uh, foot of the vacuum to, to pivot so that you can uh, put it on the on the carpet. But um, you can see it's almost, after just a few months of, of use, this thing is almost worn right through. And of course, then it'll be onto the metal, uh, onto the plastic, and it'll start um, wear, wearing its way right through the motor housing. So um, not the best um, design for longevity. So that was uh, a bit of a disappointment. Um, to get into the brush roll, which you have to do now and then, you have to undo, I think, was it just two screws? It was just the two screws and then that pops off and they didn't get in there. But this thing is really impressive as to um, how it picks up. It does pick up really well and for a kind of a cheesy looking machine. It actually does pick up well. But let's go and uh, we're gonna vacuum my carpet. And then uh, I'll show you how it works, how well it works. And all this carpet is getting maintained using a, uh, I'll show you what we use on this carpet almost every time. This is actually a much newer technology uh, bagless vacuum, a shark. That's the Navigator, and it's a good vacuum. And uh, it seems to be well made, and my wife likes using it. And anyway, there you go. So let's go and vacuum my carpet, and we'll take a look. And See if I pick anything up here. And of course, uh, I guess the carpet was vacuumed. I, I think we vacuumed it last weekend. We usually vacuum it at least once a week, sometimes more. But let's go see what we can do over there. power switches right here at the bottom there. By the way, the one on the left there, or that's the, a one and only. It's actually a 1969 Tysco Dowry shark fin, been totally, uh, had been totally reworked by a luthier in town here. That was that number of years ago, I had that done. 
Anyway, we're uh, definitely picking stuff up. I can see it in there. You see stuff moving around in there. Getting a lot of, I can see a lot of fur on there. what the uh, airflow rating or uh, suction is of this vacuum, but I, I'm positive that it's not as powerful as the uh, Hoover Hush Tone, which is what I actually use now. And yet it picks up very, very well. when I was using it um, for the job that when I go into the bedroom is uh, often a place where I see a lot of junk coming out of the carpet. People often will not bother back in the bedroom thinking that, well, I don't know how to remove it. But there's a lot of dust that collects in the bedrooms. In fact, that's where I find the most dust on the edges and corners, almost always. Not very many square feet that I'm vacuuming. But the doggies go running around in here and you know, go outside and come racing back and <laughs> the adventure goes on in here sometimes, chasing each other around. that these vacuums, uh, I think that I paid over $600 for it in Canada. I think they're a little over 400 in the U.S., so they're not a cheap vacuum. Um, so, um, and, and at the end of the day, I have determined that, obviously, uh, the Hoover Hustone was a better vacuum, I think, for what I'm using. 
F4. Um, I, I prefer the bag, much cleaner. It definitely has the power, it has the durability. It's definitely, um, yeah, it's just a better overall vacuum. The only advantage this one has is you can see what's coming out of the carpet, you can sew the customer. Um, and uh, in some cases when I'm into a really a carpet with a lot of dust in it, you can actually literally see a stream of dust coming into the canister. To go back a couple of years, two or three years ago, back when I was using this and doing two videos on it, you see some amazing uh, videos showing how well this thing is picking up. It is impressive. But uh, in the end, I determined that the Hoover has shown with a better a better choice for this for the uh, carpet cleaning, I think. All right, let's go and take a look and see what I got in here. Oh, I've got that one over here. fair amount. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video and learned something and give you some thoughts. So thanks for watching. Have a good day.